Today's lecture, we'll be discussing informed consent in medical ethics. Now, informed consent is an action which requires a few things from the patient. Now, if the physician from the patient needs to address disclosure, which is a discussion of all relevant information involving a treatment. Understanding from the patient is necessary, which is the ability to comprehend the information which the physician is giving to the patient about the treatment. Capacity on the patient's point of view is the ability to reason and make your own decisions. And voluntariness is where there is no coercion or manipulation about deciding on whether or not a patient should follow through with a treatment plan. Now, patients must be able to understand their diagnosis as well as the risks and benefits of all possible treatments. This includes what will happen if they choose to forego treatment. A physician must be able to show all of the risks and benefits and give that ratio to the patients as well as let them know what will happen and what is the course of their disease or state if they choose to not go with any of the treatment options given to them. The patient needs to understand that they have the right to revoke any written consent at any time, even orally. So a patient may choose to write out a uh, waiver or a consent form uh, in any particular scenario, but if they have a second uh, feeling on that, at any time they can opt out of their own consent. So some exceptions to informed consent include a patient who does not have decision-making capacity, a patient who is legally incompetent, implied consent in an emergency. In certain emergency situations, you don't have time to wait and ask the patient if you have uh, their permission to perform a specific treatment or procedure on them, and it is implied that in an emergency situation, the patient would agree to a life-saving situation. There are waivers that can be an exception. This is when a patient explicitly states that they are refusing their right to informed consent. Sometimes a patient may agree that they want to take part in a particular treatment, but they don't want to hear all the nitty-gritty facts and details on it for uh, whatever reason, fear, or just they trust the doctor's judgment. So this is them waiving their rights to that information. And then finally, Therapeutic privilege. Now, this one's a little tricky. This is when a physician is withholding information from the patient because of suspicion that full disclosure would harm their decision-making abilities. Now, this might have to do with a loved one uh, hearing information about another loved one, or there might be some sort of uh, uh, mental status that might come into play, but the physician would be worried that if the patient is aware of the, all the information necessary for a particular type of treatment, then they might get afraid, might get shy, and they might opt out of the treatment uh, having known all this information. So the physician uses this privilege to withhold information so as to have the patient be more willing to partake in this treatment. Therapeutic privilege is normally frowned upon because the greatest way to create a proper patient-doctor relationship is full disclosure and honesty. And therapeutic privilege could possibly harm this relationship should the patient discover that they were not given full disclosure. And these are the basics of informed consent in medical ethics.